So the Stethlantis group has 16 car brands. Out of these 16 car brands there are three new main cars that Stethlantis cannot get wrong. These cars are the DS4, Vauxhall Astra and this, the new Peugeot 308. This is a striking looking car but the real question, is it any good? Well let's find out. Hello everyone. Welcome to Everything Cars and More. Let's review the new 2022 Peugeot 308. So, let's talk about the striking design Peugeot has gone with. Well they have updated the design from the 208 and 508 and have given the car a more aggressive but premium look. To start with we have this big grille that looks similar to the 3008 and 5008. We also have some slim LED headlights that bleed into the grille and these daytime running lights running down the side of the front of the car connecting them to the side vents. Also to make this car look more aggressive they have given the car a bonnet bulge almost and some sharp creases near the lights. Let's have a look what is under the bulging bonnet. So don't be surprised if you find that the engine bay looks empty. This is because you can only get small engines that you may think will be underpowered but are surprisingly good for this type of car. So to start with you can get a 1.2 litre turbo petrol engine that creates 128 bhp which is quite nippy. There is also a 1.5 litre turbo diesel unit that creates 128 bhp. Next up are the two plug-in hybrid models the first model is a 180 bhp model which has a 148 bhp petrol engine and a 109 bhp electric motor with a 12.4 kWh battery. This has a range of 37 electric miles. The next plug-in hybrid model is the 225 bhp option. This one has a 178 bhp engine with the same electric motor and battery size. Also like the other plug-in hybrid option this version also can do 37 miles on a single charge. The price of the Peugeot 308 starts at £24,365 for the petrol and £33,035 for the plug-in hybrid option. Moving round the back, again it has taken its design language from the 208 and 508 but it looks recognisable as a 308. The tail lights are very slim and are connected with this black bar. We also have black panelling on the bumper and some fake exhausts. We also have the new Peugeot badge. So, going inside it has a sense of modern Peugeots but it has this updated style to make the car look and feel more premium. To start with we have the usual Peugeot steering wheel with the updated logo. We also have a digital 3D instrument cluster that sits on top of the steering wheel like other Peugeots. Moving along we have a full width air vent style like what you would find on Audis. We also have the new Peugeot infotainment system which is okay to use and is intuitive and better than the old system. Below this we have another screen for shortcuts buttons. Now, to me I think it is a good idea but I also think that you shouldn't need it if you have physical buttons. Moving down the center console we have a stylish design that makes you feel like you are in a premium sports car. Sitting in the back there is not a lot of legroom but headroom is okay. You do get your own USB ports and air vents and you also get your own armrest. Ideally this is where children would be so you do get isofix points. So moving into the boot you get 412 liters of space with the seats up and 1323 liters with the seats down. With the plug-in hybrid models this decreases to 361 litres and 1,271 litres but there is no storage for charging cables so there will be even less as you will need to carry them around. So, in summary then what do I think about this car? Well cars that are related to this car like the Astra and DS4 are just as good as this car which is no surprise but compare it to the Golf and you can see a big difference. The Peugeot comes out on top with better interior and exterior styling as well as good technology. It's just a shame about the rear seat space exactly like the Astra. If you like this video then please don't forget to like and subscribe and whilst you are at it, hit that bell icon to get notifications when a new video comes in. See you in the next video.